Welcome to another episode of CFAES Center for Cooperatives with Hannah Scott. Today, she's going to be looking at student-led cooperatives and what that means to you. So stay tuned. Welcome back to another episode of CFAES Center for Cooperatives with Hannah Scott. And today she's going to be talking about the student-led cooperatives. Hannah, it's always a pleasure talking with you. Hi, Patrick. Thanks so much for having me. It's it's really nice to see you. I'm really excited to be here today. Uh, notice your title, CFAES. What is that? That actually stands for the College of Food, Agricultural, and Environmental Sciences at Ohio State. So we are a part of Ohio State University, and we're based at the OSU South Centers in Piketon, Ohio. And I am happy to share more about what we do as a part of the Center for Cooperatives in the College of Food, Ag, and Environmental Science. You're the director, correct? I'm the program director here. Uh, we have a team of, of multiple folks. I have colleagues who help coordinate and are specialists. The director is actually Dr. Tom Worley. He's also the director of the OSU South Centers, which is where we're located uh, in Piketon, Ohio. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born and raised in Southern Ohio. So I'm originally from the area, from a small town. I have a background in agriculture and I have uh, my educational background is in sociology and rural sociology, as well as law. Uh, I work with the CFAES Center for Cooperatives, as you introduced. And really our role is to integrate the teaching, applied information, and outreach work uh, around the cooperative business model for our college. And in particular, we have a couple of areas where we focus. So for example, we do outreach and technical assistance around the cooperative business model and development of new and emerging cooperatives. We provide education and training to existing cooperatives through a relationship we have with a nonprofit trade association of cooperatives called the Mid-America Cooperative Council. And we do work with youth-led cooperatives and uh, activities to educate young people about the cooperative model, particularly in agriculture. Now, you're talking about student-led cooperatives. But before we jump into exactly what a student-led cooperative is, I wanted to talk about maybe why we're talking about that. Why do we why do we think it's important? Why do I think it's important to teach young people, particularly those interested in agriculture, about the cooperative business model? That many cooperative businesses in agriculture help produce the food, the fuel, and the fiber that we use every day. And there are cooperatives that produce, process, and help deliver to market, for example, many of the foods that we're maybe going to enjoy during the holiday season coming up. I don't know if you get into the holidays, Patrick, much, you and your family. Uh, what's your favorite holiday food, if you don't mind sharing? Well, on, on Thanksgiving, uh, the family always gets together and we enjoy turkey. Excellent. Excellent. My family often always enjoys a, a roasted turkey as well. And that's what I have here on the screen is a very kind of traditional Thanksgiving meal, at least in my household. Many other folks enjoy many other traditions in the holiday season. But I have this picture up here because it's an illustration of some of the types of cooperatives that actually help get the food, fuel, and fiber that we use to us. So for example, there are cooperatives of turkey growers. For example, the turkey maybe that you and your family enjoy, it might come through a cooperative business model. Potatoes, mashed potatoes are one of my favorite things at the holidays. There are cooperatives of potato growers in the United States that help growers aggregate and then market their potatoes. Similarly for sugar, maybe your favorite is dessert. Uh, there are cooperatives of sugar beet growers, for example, that help bring sugar to the marketplace. Butter, cheese, and other dairy products, we can't forget those, right, at the holidays. There are uh, cooperatives of dairy farmers that help bring, for example, those dairy products to our tables. And you actually might recognize uh, cooperatives that market farmer member products as, for example, consumer packaged goods in the grocery store 
So some of those uh, brands that folks might recognize are, for example, Ocean Spray. The, they produce cranberry and other fruit products. Florida's Natural produces uh, orange juice. It's owned by citrus growers. Blue Diamond is a, an almond grower cooperative brand. Welch's, they produce things like grape juice and fruit snacks and grape jellies and jams. That's a grower-owned cooperative brand. Uh, Sunkist is another citrus example. That's a, a grower-owned cooperative. And cooperatives really market a wide range of fruits and vegetables, cottons, grains, dairy products, uh, livestock, even wool, and many other things. And they also supply farmers often with the inputs that they need. So things like feed and fertilizer, petroleum products, seed products, crop pr protectants, uh, those are all a part of the agribusiness supply chain. And there are, there are oftentimes roles for cooperatives in that supply chain. Anna, why, why does a business enter a co-op rather than just sell it themselves? That is such a good question. And I hope that we get to that when we're talking about why, uh, what is a cooperative? Uh, so really, I, I'll, I'll talk more about that, but cooperatives offer opportunities, for example, in um, aggregation and economies of scale. They offer opportunities for uh, groups of folks to come together and uh, control uh, another step in the supply chain, for example. Sometimes what cooperatives are really good at uh, is helping to um, reduce redundancies, for example, something that an individual business like a farm or even an independent business place might need to do that a bunch of other businesses might also need to do is a redundancy, right? It might be something that uses time and resources. Well, there may be an opportunity for a cooperative of those folks to come together to reduce that need for everyone to do the same things. So sometimes groups come together to reduce those redundancies, for example. And let me show you a couple more examples, Patrick, of cooperatives in rural communities and agriculture. There are farm credit institutions, there are uh, banks effectively across the United States that are actually borrower owned uh, banking institutions and they're operated as cooperatives. And they actually have provided over $19 billion in new loans to small farmers and ranchers. We also have uh, electric cooperatives have a broad presence in rural communities across the United States. They power about 56% of the United States land mass. They serve about 42 million people. And those farmer cooperatives that I was mentioning, there are uh, about 1,700 farmer, rancher, and fisher-owned cooperatives in the United States. They have right around 1.8 million voting members. And really interestingly, about 17% of them are more than 100 years old. So really what I'm saying here is if you're involved in agriculture in the United States, chances are that you interact with the cooperative business model and young people who are learning about agriculture or maybe they're interested in careers in agriculture in the future are likely going to interact with cooperatives, whether that's as members or maybe it's as employees or leaders. And so that's really why I wanna to talk to you today about the student-led cooperative model. So here is the uh, the definition of a cooperative. It's, it's basically a number of individuals uh, that come together that aren't strong enough to sell their products on a one-to-one -one basis, is that correct? So when we talk about the, the definition of a cooperative, we're thinking about specifically a business model and we're thinking about a business model of multiple units, whether that's people or other businesses. And so a cooperative by definition is a user owned, user controlled business that distributes benefits based on use. And you can see two definitions here. Um, another definition that is often used across the globe is that cooperatives are autonomous associations of people united voluntarily to meet common needs. Those needs might be economic, they might be social, they might be cultural, and they do that through a jointly owned and democratically controlled enterprise. And cooperatives are really based on values of self-help and equity and democracy. So you'll hear often that cooperatives are a democratically controlled enterprise 
Uh, and that means that cooperatives are often operated via what we call a one member, one vote structure or some other democratic structure. And really, Patrick, what they're good at is bringing multiple people or business units together to receive some benefit of working together. So some something that I heard a colleague say that I often use in this space is, um, can you do something better together than you can individually? If the answer is yes, then it might make sense to think about a cooperative model for that. So you're, you're saying that it's a business model. Uh, so if I belong to a cooperative, I, I'm, I'm somewhat involved in business or I'm fully involved in business. So you're, you're oftentimes, if you're involved, for example, in a farmer owned cooperative, like the ones that I just mentioned, you're involved in business at being a farmer, right? Your business is running, owning and operating your farm to produce potatoes or sugar beets or turkeys. Um, maybe it's dairy product, right? Fluid milk. That's your business. And then when those farmers come together, for example, to market their product or to purchase inputs or to receive supplies, they do that in a cooperative. For example, think about the fact that maybe um, all of the farmers who are growing potatoes, they're going to have to um, aggregate those potatoes. They're probably going to have to wash those potatoes and then distribute them, for example. Right. So rather than all of those farmers doing that individually, perhaps there are benefits to them doing it as a group in a cooperative structure because they can aggregate all the potatoes that they produce and reach those economies of scale. Maybe they can reach bigger marketplaces or they can reduce the cost of the infrastructure that it takes for them to, to get those potatoes to the marketplace. Uh, when we're thinking about purchasing together, maybe those larger quantities of purchasing as a group can reduce the costs of that purchasing. So those are examples where individual cooperative members, they're business owners, right, oftentimes, or they might be households, for example, in a consumer-based cooperative. But those units are coming together, and the cooperative serves a business function on behalf of those members. And those members are the owners of the cooperative. So they are actually the people who, as you can see here on my slide, kind of breaking down those three components of what a cooperative is, those members who use the cooperative, they actually are the owners of the business. They provide the equity and are uh, holders of equity. And they are the folks who make decisions uh, on behalf of the cooperative, particularly through that one member, one vote mechanism that we talked about. So that democratic mechanism. And then of course, as a business owner, um, the owners of the business are entitled to the benefits of the business. So oftentimes that is uh, receiving profits. And in a cooperative, the members uh, receive the, the profits from the business, at least in part. Suppose I have a half acre in which I grow tomatoes. My neighbors also have uh, half an acre of tomatoes and, and maybe there are five or six of us and we want to sell to a grocery store. Mm -hmm. Would it be... Uh, to our best interest to be involved in a co-op? Well, to say that something would be in your best interest, I, I, my training hesitates to say that, but, but the idea would be um, it might be beneficial if it can provide some opportunities for you. For example, maybe the grocery store needs a pretty high volume of tomatoes, right? The grocery yes. store wants to have tomatoes uh, maybe all around the year or in pretty big volumes. And maybe you on your own uh, don't produce that many tomatoes, or maybe it's too risky for you to produce that many tomatoes. Well, then perhaps there's a benefit to you and your neighbor pooling together your tomatoes and being able then to sell to the grocery store because you have that volume. That question of whether it makes sense to do something cooperatively is, is something that I call a paper and pencil question. Just like any other, as you know, Patrick, any other business enterprise, you have to do some planning and exploration to understand if it's feasible, that's true of cooperatives too. But the question oftentimes is, is the cooperative going to provide the benefit that we are hoping it provides? So is it going to provide a market opportunity or is it going to reduce costs or any other benefit that you hope it provides? Does that make sense? That makes a, a lot of sense. I, I better Excellent. understand it. 
Now, you said something about student-led cooperatives. So what is a student-led cooperative? Really, in my view, a student-led cooperative, maybe, for example, a group of students is in a 4-H group together, or perhaps they are in uh, an FFA chapter, or maybe they're in an agriculture class, or some kind of group where they're working together, and they're operating an enterprise. You know, around me, there's an FFA chapter that sells flowers every spring. There are FFA chapters that grow things in a greenhouse. There are FFA chapters that raise livestock together. There are groups of students, perhaps in classes or in 4-H clubs, that do similar things. And a student-led cooperative really is when those students have that enterprise that they're operating using cooperative principles like the ones we just talked about. So for example, maybe those students are um, the members of the cooperative and maybe they're electing their peers. Uh, maybe they get to vote in that election to elect their peers to a board of directors that maybe helps make management decisions for that enterprise that they're operating. So it's taking those cooperative principles and, and um, using those in a context where students maybe are operating some type of agricultural enterprise. So one of the uh, opportunities we've had, I mentioned at the beginning when we were talking about the types of things that the CFAES Center for Cooperatives does is we've had the opportunity to work with actually an agribusiness management program at a career and technical center, a high school nearby where the students have a learning lab that is a 300 acre school farm. They get to operate that farm as a part of their lab activities in that program. And they have actually been working to, to operate that farm as a student-led cooperative. And we've been working with them to help them understand the cooperative model and enhance that student-led cooperative, particularly thinking about marketing and um, uh, learning about agribusiness management. And our goal with that in part is to actually develop a toolkit that other educators can use to help implement a student-led cooperative model or maybe pieces of a student-led cooperative model. So Patrick, what I wanted to do was share with you a couple of ideas for educators or community members who are working with young people in agriculture to think about how they might introduce the cooperative model to students or to help students learn about cooperatives a little bit further. So for example, one thing that educators can do to help young people learn about cooperatives is uh, what I consider kind of career exploration. So Patrick, I don't know about you, but when I was a young person, I went back and forth uh, in terms of maybe what I wanted to do for my career. So oftentimes it can be helpful to help young people explore many opportunities. So one thing that educators might think about is um, helping um, identify a cooperative in their community, maybe it's in their county or maybe it's in a multi-county region, identify those cooperatives, particularly in agriculture, but it could be any type of cooperative, and uh, encourage young people to go to the websites of those cooperatives and learn about the types of careers they have. Maybe they have somewhere where they post job opportunities, for example. Um, those young people can then look at those job opportunities and learn about the types of careers open at those cooperatives, the type of background and education and skills that those careers might uh, require from them. And I wanted to mention that our center developed a map that's available online with um, cooperative headquarters across the state of Ohio. So for example, maybe an educator says, well, I don't know if there are cooperatives in my community or county or in the counties around me. They can actually visit go.osu.edu slash Ohio cooperatives and find a map that our team made of cooperatives located in Ohio. Uh, and that could be even the basis for an activity like that. I am really amazed at how many co-ops there are. Yeah, uh, and that's I, I... actually something that many folks don't realize. Globally, there are about 3 million cooperatives, and they are really in all different kinds of sectors. Oftentimes, people are interacting with cooperatives, and they don't really know that they're a cooperative. And that's because it's a business model. 
And it, it doesn't necessarily, you can't necessarily tell from the outside that something is a cooperative um, just based on seeing it maybe in in marketing or uh, just from being a consumer. Now, are all these cooperatives agricultural based? The ones on this map are not. The, this map actually encompasses cooperatives across sectors, but you can actually filter the map and look at sectors specifically. So you can filter the map to just show you the agricultural cooperatives. 85 counties out of 88 have at least one cooperative. They have a cooperative physical location. So, so a place where a cooperative has um, a physical location that they're serving, serving members or customers, yeah. So if I'm a, a student that wants to better understand co-ops or to better understand the business models or to better understand the specific program interests that I have, uh, going to this map or going to the uh, different places, et cetera, uh, will give me a better understanding of that model. Yeah, that's our hope. Absolutely. Another way that educators might be uh, interested in helping young people learn about cooperatives is to think about visiting. You know, once you use that map and find that there are cooperatives around you, probably uh, maybe visit one of those cooperatives or invite a leader from one of those cooperatives to talk with your group. Uh, so uh, maybe, for example, you have an opportunity to bring a retired leader even into the group. That's something that we did with the project that I mentioned. Maybe that's not an opportunity that's accessible to an educator. And actually, we have resources online at go.osu.edu slash Y-C-L-E. That stands for Youth Cooperative Leadership Experience, where folks can actually look at a couple of video tours and talks that are available on that website. They're, they're fairly short, but they're tours of cooperatives like, for example, you see here Heritage Cooperative, which is a large agricultural cooperative uh, that has customers in actually a multi-state region. There's a tour of Casa Nueva Cooperative, which is in Southeast Ohio. It's a restaurant uh, that's owned by its workers using the cooperative model. And there are talks actually with farmer cooperative leaders. So farmers who, for example, are delegates to a cooperative or maybe serve on the board of a cooperative. So those videos might be ways that educators can help their students engage with cooperatives too. I noticed that there's a uh, store a uh, furniture store that advertises and says that it's employee owned. Is that a cooperative? So it it may be what we call a worker owned cooperative where the workers come together to uh, own the majority of the equity in their enterprise where they work using cooperative principles. But it may also be what we call uh, an employee stock ownership plan business. There are actually many ways that employees can own a business. Worker cooperatives are one of them, but there actually are a couple of other mechanisms. So it may be what we call, Patrick, and maybe you've heard it, the term an ESOP. Uh, that's often, oftentimes shorthanded to employee owned as well. Oh, oh, that's interesting. I wanted to share, Patrick, one more way that educators might help young people learn about cooperatives. And I mentioned that a, a student-led cooperative would be where students maybe are uh, managing an enterprise that they maybe, for example, sell flowers or uh, sell other farm products um, as a cooperative, one thing that educators can do is help those students learn about marketing. Uh, for example, ask a local producer to talk with your group about their experience selling their products or help maybe your students in that student-led cooperative develop a brand identity. And this actually is a, a logo that was developed as a part of that project that I just mentioned. And so Patrick, I wanna leave you with a couple of those activity ideas and to encourage folks who might be interested in learning more about student-led cooperatives to engage with us, to get a hold of us. Um, I'm going to share our contact information here. And one of the things that is our goal from this project is to develop a toolkit with ideas like this for folks who want to learn more or maybe implement a student-led cooperative. And so uh, if folks sign up for our email list or get in touch with us, maybe if they have an interest in that toolkit or in learning more, we'd be happy to talk with them more.
Uh, we're talking with Anna Scott. Anna Scott is the program director of the CFAES Center for Cooperatives at The Ohio State University. I've always found Hannah be willing to uh, discuss with individuals questions that they may have. She also has a very good staff of individuals who are very knowledgeable and who would be willing to also assist. Hannah, thank you. Thank you so much, Patrick. We really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.